We all need thumbnails for our YouTube videos and Gaming Freaks 18 asked me how I made mine. So this is your answer. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that I create my thumbnails using a computer. If I tried to do this on a mobile device, it would be absolute nightmare. So you can try if you want, but I'm not going to do a guide on how to do that because it's just far too fiddly. With that being said, I use Photoshop CS2. And the reason I use such an old version of the program is because it's free in a kind of technical way. Adobe has stopped using its management license services to check when people download this. So there is a website on screen now. If you visit that website, it will tell you how to download it from Adobe without having to actually pay for it. Whether it's actually free or not is debatable, but I've been using it for years like this and I'm sure several others have, so I do believe you should be fine. But of course you do this at your own risk. Once you've downloaded and installed Photoshop, you can create a new image from the program. You can follow my template on screen now. The important thing to remember is not to make the image too big because YouTube has a two megabyte limit anyway. So any really fancy massive thumbnails are going to be useless. The first thing you'll want to do is create a layer. So once you've created the layer, then use the shape tool on the left hand side to draw a rectangle and make it whatever color you want. And the reason you're creating layers here is so that you can move these layers easily later on. If you just draw a shape on your canvas, then you can't move that shape later on. So it makes it much more difficult. So what I've done is created my layer and now I can select it using the select tool and then manipulate it and change the size of it which is very useful. And what I am actually doing here is creating four layers of different rectangles to create the border of my YouTube thumbnail. And the reason I create a border is that it just stands out a little bit more on the suggested videos on the column when you're watching other videos. And you can change the color to mean different things. I have a loose policy of having blue colors meaning tutorials, red colors meaning news, yellow colors meaning new apps, purple colors meaning channel updates, and so on. So yeah, you can change this if you want, but that's the general principle that I follow. So once I've created my four layers and drawn a shape in each of those four layers, I can set them to the boundaries of my image to get this frame effect. You don't need to worry about these shapes going off the edges of your image. It's not going to expand your image to compensate for that. It will simply capture what's in the resolution size of your picture. So as you can see now, I've tightened up my borders so they're just little bits of strips running around the edge of my picture. The general principle I'm following on these thumbnails is to have a picture on the left half of the screen and wording on the right side of the screen. So what I'm going to do is get a image of the Photoshop CS2 icon and then simply open it and drag it from its own image file into my canvas that I'm working on so that I have the icon. You may also notice that this has a white background and if it ever has this, you can use the wand tool on Photoshop, click in the space and then delete that white background and as you will see now, the icon has no background, so it nicely fits and you can put anything else behind it if you wish to. With the image in place, I can now expand it to cover the entire half of one screen. So it's ideal to have something that's square to fit the dimensions of your widescreen picture. Next up, we have the words. You have to consider that when you're looking at a thumbnail on a very small screen, you can't read a lot of writing. So I limit myself to simply three lines which I may be able to get maybe five or six words out of. The font I use is Bebus New because it's simple, has an impact, and you can also resize the shape and size of it and it's still relatively easy to read. This font is free, but it might not be on your computer already, so you need to download it. There's a link in the description. It downloads a TTF file and you just simply double click on it and that should ask you whether you want to apply it to your system. Relatively straightforward, something that you do with all fonts. What I'm doing now is creating my first line of text on the right side of the screen. I choose three different colors, again, just to make it look more visually appealing and to catch the eye. On YouTube videos, when people are glancing at thumbnails, the first one is red, the second one is purple, and the last line is green, all of a slightly sickly color because it just needs to stand out. 
What I'm doing now is duplicating the first line, then changing the text, changing the color, and then resizing it because I like to have the middle line significantly smaller than the two lines above and below it, kind of like a sandwich. Again, it just attracts the eye to something that's different on screen. And then with the third line, I do exactly the same thing. So we have this large, small, large font effect on my thumbnail. And that's pretty much it folks, a thumbnail created in about five minutes. The last thing you want to do is save the image into something that you can upload to YouTube. So I save my files as PNG files because it saves it in a relatively small size and the quality is pretty good. You'll also want to save this image as a PSD file because that means you can start interchanging it with different pictures and different words to create new thumbnails literally within a minute. Let me finish this tutorial by saying that this is not the be all and end all of thumbnails. My method isn't perfect. Some YouTubers spend almost as long creating their thumbnails as they do their videos to make them as eye catching as possible. For me personally, I simply lack the skills to create highly edited photoshopped thumbnails and I don't have the time to create them either. So I've ended up with this template which I think does a good job but not a perfect job. As always, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want more content just like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the Video Gadgets Journal. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your tech day. Bye for now.